Hello my dear friends, hello my dear listeners, how are you all? Today we are here to start a new story from a new chapter. Till now we were reading from the chapter 1, the tales told by Bhabukhure. But today we are going to start a new chapter that is part 2 from the book Bengal Fairy Tales written by Francis Bradley Bradley Bird and this book was illustrated by Abhinindranath Thakur and it was first published in the year 1920. So let's start the first story from the chapter 2. The name of the story is Madhumala, the Wreath of Sweetness. I must say this story is really a huge story. So we are going to read this story in part. So today we are going to read the first part. Let's start Madhumala, the Wreath of Sweetness. There was once a king who had vast possessions. Everything that the world could give was his, save one thing only. He was childless, and the fact that he had no son was taken as a sign of the displeasure of the gods. So, in spite of his rank and prestige, he was looked down upon as an atkura. One day, at dawn, the sweeper was at work in the palace in the very apartment next to that in which the king slept. The latter, roused by the noise, came out of his room and saw the sweeper who, to avoid seeing a childless man's face at the beginning of a new day, covered his eyes with his hands. The king observed this and was astonished to find that he was an object of aversion even to a sweeper. From that time he became very sad and morse and a smile was seldom seen on his face. Heaven, however, at last took pity on him. One day, Bidhata Purush, disguised as a religious medicant, with a bright lamp of gold in his hand, visited him, and speaking words of consolation, said, O king, do not despair. Bright days are yet to come. Take this lamp, and with it, Go to that tank of yours which is called the tank of life. You will find there a tree of silver with fruit of gold. Two of these golden fruits you must bring down with an arrow with your eyes towards the ground and your breath suspended. The king, overjoyed at this revelation, did as ordered, with the exception that he forgot when shooting the arrow to hold his breath. This omission spoiled everything, the fruit did not fall from the tree, and the king fell senseless on the ground. Vidhata Purush, the medicant who was standing by, revived him and said, O king, rise up, and with eyes shut, stretch forth your palms, and a bird of gold will descend on one of them. Take the bird home, and throwing away its wings and claws, have seven different kind of curry made of it. Eat some of each of the seven, and you will have a son, godlike in appearance and endowed with many accomplishments. But under the earth you must build a mansion of stone, and there the queen, having passed the days of her confinement, must remain with the prince and his nurse for twelve years, secluded from the world. The king carried out the instructions to the letter. The bird was eaten, a mansion of stone built, and the queen removed there to await the birth of the long-desired son. In due time, the son was born and named Madan Kumar, the cupid-like youth. Rapidly he grew up, both in mind and body. He had nearly completed the twelve years of seclusion prescribed when, one day, he expressed a desire to see the world outside. The sun, the moon, the stars, and all the other wonderful phenomena of nature, of which he had read and heard from his nurse. His mother, remembering Bidada Purush, says, injunction refused compliance but the boy's persistence at last prevailed the consent of his father however had to be obtained for there were still three days wanting 
for the completion of the twelve years. The father, unwilling to refuse his son's request, yet doubtful, called and consulted a conclave of astrologers and other men of lore. They finally decided that the short period of only three days was not worth considering, and accordingly the queen and her son were brought with great state to the palace thus for the sake of three days was vidhata purusha's command violated madan kumar was very fond of sports and one day when quite a young man he asked his father to let him join in a hunting expedition reluctant as his parents were the importunity of the youth carried the day and he set out with a large number of attendants the prime minister's son being the chief among them this young man was specially commissioned by the king to look after his son for the whole day the chase continued without success and madan being loath to go home empty-handed proposed to have tents pitched in the woods and pass the night there. Tired out with the chase, he was soon asleep. Now it happened that about midnight two paris, Kalapari and Nidrapari, by name, who were flying by visit the dancing hall of Indra, the king of the Hindu gods, looked down and saw Madan as he lay asleep in his tent and entranced with his handsome person they halted in their flight so my dear friends today i am stopping here we will come to know what happened to madan and what consequences uh, he has to face as by three days only they have violated the without the purusha's wish so what happened next and what uh, these two paris did to him we will come to know uh, in the next chapter or in the next part so till then be happy be jolly tata -ta.